This is number two in our series on sediment control BMPs. This is the sediment basin. And I'm going to talk a little bit about today is maintenance of sediment basins, not the construction or the design. But here is one typical example. I'll just do a pan around so you can get a, a full view of the entire facility. We have several sources of uh, inflow into the basin. We have one rock line channel coming down here. We have a temporary slope pipe that hopefully you can see coming in. Maybe I'll... Coming in there. But we also have a, a good deal of sediment that has come into that basin. And uh, it's on the baffle, you can see where it's actually overtopping the baffle. So that baffle has not been maintained properly. The sediment is up to the clean out elevation, which there should be a clean out stake, which I do not see. But it could be there somewhere buried. But the baffle is definitely not maintained properly and not functioning as needed. It does not do what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to maintain the flow length. And if the water is evident in a couple locations flowing right over top of the, the baffle, then it is not doing that. And I can tell from this looking here, there's a couple things wrong with that baffle. Super self fence is supposed to have guide wires at the top, and there's definitely, you can see, no guide wire at the top of this silver, uh, super self fence baffle. So that's one thing that's missing. It also is not tied securely to the a post and has slid down. Uh, the skimmer is probably setting on top of the uh, a rock rest, which is acceptable. That's maybe why it looks a little cocked. But there seemed to be a lot of debris around that uh, film that maybe uh, could be blocking the orifice. So that probably should be shake, shaken off and maintained. But uh, as for erosion coming into the basin, both uh, channels, Rock line channels are taken care of and seem to be holding up rather well. And the slope pipe is piped down to the bottom so it does not cause the erosion of the embankment, which is a good thing. Okay, on that same project now we're going to look at another baffle, another maintenance, but this time on a sediment trap. It's got a smaller drainage area naturally but it's at the base of a very steep slope and it also has a baffle because we're in a uh, high quality watershed here and it has to have the four to one flow length so that's why the baffles are uh, longer than you would see in a typical sediment trap the baffle seems to be functioning a lot better in this one and better, better maintained but it looks to me like the same thing has occurred here as you look further up on where the sediment's coming in. Let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit with this camera. You can see that the sediment has left a stain mark where it looked like it went over top. Now, that could be just because it's coming in at such force that it's uh, blowing in in that direction. But I also suspect that we don't have the guy wire across the top to hold that fence up tighter across the top and it would actually sink down with the weight of the water and thing. So a super silt fence should be constructed even as a baffle according to the design detail which would require a guide wire across the top and at the bottom of the fence. A lot of people miss that step when they're installing super silt fence. Also do not notice a, uh, a clean out stake but we're kind of distance away so it could be there. I also anticipate that you would probably see a skimmer behind the fence as well but that's on the other side of that baffle because like I said it does discharge to a high quality watershed. I'll give kudos to the uh, contractor for a couple things here though. Uh, the slope very steep. He did take the time to stabilize the slope and it is well stabilized. In addition uh, that rock at the bottom there is a discharge from a slope pipe. He put a top of the berm uh, in and collected all the drainage so the drainage went into the slope pipe 
then pipe down over the slope rather than causing erosion down over it, which minimizes the amount of sediment going to the trap and it also protects the slope, saving him from restabilizing it over and over again and it also prevents the amount of sediment getting into the trap. So that is a good BMP practice and, uh, and on this particular job is uh, well uh, implemented. So maintenance is a very important part of sediment traps and sediment basins as well as all sediment BMPs and erosion control BMPs. But uh, as you can see, without proper inspection and proper knowledge that certain things slip through the cracks, which may look minor, but it's amazing how much more sediment can get through by the smallest details on the plan that aren't in implemented properly. Every part of that sediment trap, sediment basin in the design should be followed. And uh, baffle length is one of them, baffle height is another, and certainly making sure that your baffle is up to the top elevation and maintained is another. And the final one that I always like to mention is a clean out stake and making sure that sediment will not just go to the settle around the riser. Usually the heaviest stuff will settle where it first comes in and hits the uh, ponded water and that's right where the intake is to the inflow is into the trapper basin. So that's why you have to have the stake placed in the middle of the trap and as soon as the sediment comes up to the level on that stake then you need to clean it out. Well there are just a couple things on sediment basins and sediment traps that I'd like to bring to your attention and uh, I hope that uh, was at least a little bit educational. Thanks for watching.